I'm going to read and answer each comment from a public subscriber from my video of making English as a programming language. Which generation would this English Plus fit in at? 5th, 6th. English Plus is the name I gave my programming language. Before I answer, I will play a small part from the video for a quick refresher on what English Plus is. Here is a simple program written in three popular programming languages. We get a number from the user and display it back. Looking at them, we can see a pattern. There is always text that is easy for the computer to understand. And sometimes there are comments explaining in plain English what is happening. What we are going to do is remove all of this text for the computer and leave only the comments. The result is English Plus, where the code is written for humans, not machines. So which generation would it be? This refers to the five generations of programming languages, where the fourth is languages like Python, which are similar to statements in human language. And I think English Plus falls into the fourth generation. The fifth are languages like Prolog. Prolog looks like this. In Prolog, the programmer writes the facts and rules so that when you create queries, it solves some kind of a problem. It's a lot different than regular programming. Honestly, I feel like most popular programming languages can be picked up fairly easily. It's just hard to find a lesson that teaches it in the right way. Just because someone understands something doesn't mean they'll be good at teaching it to other people. And it feels like that's a lot more true when it comes to programming languages. Although when someone does learn a language, there are still problems when it comes to less common things that can be done. Since it's less common, it's less likely to be taught. So you could go your whole life not knowing certain functions of the language you use most of the time. Although that's true for any language, not just programming languages. I think an English one would definitely help for learning what things to do. But I also think it would be easier to mess up the lines since there are so many ways of saying the same thing. For the part that is hard to find a lesson that teaches a programming language in the right way, I completely agree. In my university, professors that teach me subjects on computer science I can see that my professors know a lot on the topic, but they have a really difficult time teaching the subject to the students. And the re I think the reason for that is because it's extremely hard for them to put themselves in our shoes. A lot of things that seem easy for them are very difficult for us. But that is not only in university, I've seen it in many other places. For example, recently I've tried to learn fast API. The first thing I did was to search on YouTube for a tutorial. We can see that some of them are quite old. And when I started watching them, it was not what I needed. Not only are they long, but I skipped around and I saw that even if I go through them and learn them, they will not help me solve my issue. I wanted to build a simple server where users can register, log in, there's authentication, uh, there are also tasks, each user has its own tasks and can see only his own tasks, but ad admins can see every user's tasks. Like no matter which tutorial I watch, it won't be enough for my problem. So I decided to just go through the documentation, but the documentation is very long, too long. What I actually need will not take too much time to learn, but in order to find what I need, I have to go through a lot of information that I will not need and not use. So he thinks that coding in English would help in learning the language. What stood out to me the most when I used English as a programming language was how much I learned when I tried to make a game with it. To make a game I used Phaser. When you finish the tutorial you will have a lot of code on your computer and when I went through the tutorial I felt like I was learning. But in the end, I just had code on my computer that I wasn't quite sure how it was working. And the most important thing is that I couldn't do anything with the code. The way English Plus works is that you write a line of code and above it, you add a comment explaining that line. And that comment is kind of dynamic. These parts in the comment, when you put values in there, 
they will be copy pasted in the line of code. In a sense, all the code I had following the tutorial, I had to explain each line in plain English. In order to do that, I had to go through the documentation for Phaser. And since for a single line of code, I had to summarize a lot of information to explain it properly and to be able to use it, I managed to learn a lot. And I was surprised at the difference between just following this tutorial and explaining line by line with English Plus. So as an alternative to searching for a tutorial or having to go through a lengthy documentation, I'm interested once more trying out translating a whole project with English Plus. I think this way and if the project is quite similar to what we are trying to make, this will be the most valuable tutorial one could have. And finally, the problem that the subscriber sees is that there are many ways of saying the same thing. So the problem he has found is that, okay, we've translated a single line of code in plain English. And when it's time to write the meaning, you have many ways to write that meaning. And for sure, you will not remember how exactly you wrote it when you explained each line. And I think I have an idea how to solve this. We can keep the translation of each line. This is how it looks like when I use the translation, which is then translated to this code in JavaScript. Instead of having the user type in English, which is translated to the code, why not do it the opposite? So the user will still have to create some sort of a translation between lines of code and what they mean in plain English. This is very valuable part in the process. But after this has been written, the user should continue coding in the language itself. For example, in this project, it's JavaScript. Then what English Plus will do is translate this in plain English. English Plus will be like Google Translate, where you're translating, for example, JavaScript into plain English. This way, any code that you see, you can translate it. And if the translator has difficult time translating, you can help it by adding more explanations for different kinds of lines. The end goal for this process, like what's the use case for all of this, it will be the following scenario. You are trying to create a project and you find that a particular library or language is best suited for the situation, but you don't know the library or language. You cannot afford right now to go through all of the documentation and maybe it may turn out that there is a better solution and you want to quickly just try out a few ideas. And just watching tutorials is not enough because the use case is a bit more complicated. So the goal would be to find similar projects, similar code to what we are aiming for and to go through line by line and translate it in English so that English Plus can translate it into plain English. So it's easier to understand and the process of you translating each line will, will help you get a better understanding and learn a lot faster for your particular use case. Then as you continue to gradually transition to writing in that language or library, at any moment you can switch to its English translation if it gets complicated, or if you find examples while you struggle with a problem to easily translate that code as well. So the use case I'm seeing for English Plus is to help you more quickly get up to speed with a language or library for your particular use case. This was very enjoyable to watch, you earned a sub, thank you. I hate to say this, but I think ultimately this is the opposite of an ideal language. The problem with having your syntax be plain English is that a large part of the world, America, has some wild and fundamentally stupid colloquial grammar and plain English just isn't a meaningful standard. When you use regular verbal commands for your code, it tends to be susceptible to a programmer following what they consider to be normal grammar in a way that contradicts the expected JavaScript syntax and it just gets confusing and falls apart. I am a Zoomer baby and I am not super familiar with it, but from the two instances I've seen of Cobol, 
That's how it works and it is a nightmare, like worse than full OOP level of nightmare. The video itself was super interesting though, I subbed and I look forward to your future stuff. Thank you for that. If I understand correctly, the problem this subscriber is trying to explain is that English is not a formal language. When I learned logic programming in university, we learned, learned about formal languages, about the syntax and semantics of a language. And for programming languages, when you write a program, there are a lot of rules that need to be met. And if at any point a rule is broken, you're not typing anymore in that language. The syntax needs to be correct. Whereas in plain English, you don't have those strict rules. So here, a possible idea is to make English into a formal language, but in the end, some kind of a programming language will form like all the others. The more I solve this problem, the more I will create just another programming language. Is this a joke video or you're serious? What started English as a programming language was when I brainstormed ideas for my next project. So I got a whiteboard and on it I started writing every, every idea I came up with. My goal was to brainstorm a hundred ideas. One of those ideas was coding in plain English. From all of the ideas, this idea is what got my interest the most. I wanted to see if I realized this idea, how it would look like. So I'm serious about it. I'm curious how coding in English would look like. I can see this being useful for generating documentation, like taking a more complex code file and compiling it into this language. So you can compare them side by side to figure out what's going on. But for practical use, at least in my experience, I find myself having to work around the machine more than the machine has to work around me, but having a layer of abstraction is nice. So I'd rather the code syntax be a happy medium between plain English and machine code. But this is an interesting idea nonetheless. Thank you. This comment aligns well with the idea from this subscriber, where English plus will be more like documentation. This is really powerful when it's used as documentation because when you find code that is similar to what you're looking for and it can explain it using your own words that you've used to describe each line, it will make the learning process a lot faster. So yes, I'm thinking I'm also going towards the idea of generating documentation. Thank you for your comment. Sub to you at 635 subs. I am 636. I hope you get big man. Good luck. Thank you. I don't think this is going anywhere. Modern Modern languages and even Python can feel like natural language with little hours of practice. I agree. Recently with my project where I made the guitar into a keyboard for the computer, I had to use a lot of Python and while using Python, I came to really like it and it was really close to coding in English. Like Python is doing a lot better job than what I was trying to do with English Plus. So I agree with you. I am thinking of making it into a tool for generating documentation. Congrats. What do you think? Nice video and nice work. Your work can actually really be useful in terms of education. However, I'd suggest you make it more accessible like Python. Having a website and installer so people can download it easily. Yes, once I have a version that is valuable and helpful and it's ready for use for the public, I'll for sure make it easy to download and access. Thank you for your comment. Behavior driven development. So this describes the behavior of the code, which English Plus does as well. But the description is used for software tests, something like this. So behavior driven development seems like it's for a specific case and with a lot smaller scope. I will not shrink the scope for English Plus to be just for testing, but thank you for mentioning. Is there a way to download this new language? The first moment when it's ready for the public, that's when I'll give a download. Before that, 
I, the only reason I would give a download is for some early testing. I'm commenting for the algorithm. This is extremely valuable content that more people should see. I can't believe that at the time of writing this comment, you only have 403 subscribers. If you keep up this quality and content, you're going places. I've never seen you before and you just randomly appeared in my YouTube feed. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for all your comments. I'll do my best to create a project that is in practical use and will be of value to you all.